As a serious art medium, watercolour has had a chequered history that can be traced back to the early cave paintings of Paleolithic Europe. It has long been associated as a sketching medium and when it did gain some precedence during the 19th century, the use of fugitive materials caused a decline in the medium's popularity and a sharp drop in the value of painted work. Nevertheless, a few artists continued to work with watercolours and with the various watercolour societies and art material manufacturers developing it into the popular art medium it is today. Since the earliest civilizations, watercolour has been used as a colouring medium. The ancient Egyptians used water-soluble colours to illustrate papyrus manuscripts, whilst in Asia the Chinese, Japanese and Korean artists created watercolour paintings of both simplicity and complexity. Its early history in Europe, however, saw it used primarily for illuminating manuscripts during the Middle Ages and after the Renaissance as a medium for sketching and tinting woodblock illustrations. It was in the tradition of botanical and wildlife illustrations and the recording of scientific expeditions the watercolour continued to be used in Europe during the 16th and 17th centuries. Architects, engineers, geologists and archaeologists all used watercolour to document designs, present ideas for commissioned projects and illustrate discoveries. Then, during the 18th century, its popularity spread, particularly in England, where it became the fashionable pastime of the elite and aristocratic classes. It is in the 19th century that the techniques began to be used that we now recognise as the essence of modern watercolour. Transparent watercolour became popular in the United States of America during the 19th century. The traditional transparent technique involves the overlaying of thin, transparent washes that rely on the white of the paper for their effect. The white of the paper provides the highlights in the painting and as more washes are overlaid, the tone and the colour deepen. Being water soluble, the paint can be modified in different ways by the addition or removal by water and by the use of brushes, sponges, cloths and tissues. When completely dry, the whiteness of the paper can be reclaimed by scratching out, as used by John Singer Sargent in his painting Group, Siesta in a Swiss Wood. The Boston watercolourist J. Frank Courier painted on soaked paper, which allowed the washes to run and blur, as can be seen in his painting White Beaches. Although Courier caused a stir in America in the late 19th century with this technique, the use of washes and wetting wet techniques had already been discovered by J. M. W. Turner and featured heavily in many of his watercolour sketches in the early 19th century. In England and Scotland there was a lot of interest in watercolour and so saw the formation of several watercolour painting societies. These societies provided annual exhibitions and acted as agents for many artists they also engaged in status rivalry and debates, particularly between the supporters of the transparent technique and the use of denser, more opaque watercolours. It is interesting to note that many British watercolourists used both transparent and opaque techniques together, as in the case in John Frederick Lewis's A Frank Encampment in the Desert of Mount Sinai, 1842, the convent of St Catherine in the distance. With the beginning of a commercial market, art material manufacturers began producing commercial watercolours, supplying them not only in blocks but also in the newly invented tube. However, because of the poor light fastness or fugitive nature of many of the pigments being used at this time, which were worsened by the very techniques that were so unique to watercolour, the value of painted work declined. Although many of the pigments used in watercolour at this time were the same as those used in oil colours, the fact that the watercolourists were using thin washes of colour made the degradation of pigments 
with poor light fastness quicker and so the loss of colour was far more rapid and noticeable than in the thicker layers normally applied in oil painting. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries technological development in the chemical industry soon followed producing the pigments and raw materials available today which have greatly improved the fastness and permanence of colours allowing watercolour to be recognised as a serious art medium.